All right, so today's really cool science news in the earth sciences is actually looking at how climate change and specifically warming climate is going to lead to a change in the color of alpine uh, glacial lakes. So um, where is this coming from? Um, there is a researcher, a lake researcher named Rolf Vinbrook. And he's at the University of Alberta, in Alberta, Canada. Um, and he put out a report um, with the Alpine Club of Canada. I'll write that up here too. And the report was um, basically the State of the Mountains report, if you want to go and look at it. Um, and basically, he went around and he collected data looking at um, images of all of these different alpine glacial lakes and found out that the lakes are changing in color. So I'm going today to talk a little bit about what these alpine um, glacial lakes are and why water looks the way it does. So basically, why is water uh, blue when we look at it and what is the study showing us? Um, so the first thing is, what are these alpine glacial lakes? Um, so if you uh, recall, we have kind of some nice uh, glaciated um, landscape and we'll have a big uh, mountain or alpine glacier. Okay, and these move down slope. There's the long, um, the nose kind of going down towards the toe. These move uh, down slope under the weight of gravity and at the toe, which is the end, um, this is where we see um, melting. And melting is more than um, the additions or the accumulations of new ice. Um, and so what happens, um, we get sediment that comes out at this point and we'll sometimes see the formation of these beautiful lakes. Um, and so the lakes are a product of this melt water um, and also sediment being added to it. So these lakes are really cold. If you ever go swimming there, it's just melted ice that's being added in. Um, and if you go hiking out in these areas, um, you know, uh, the Canadian Rockies are a beautiful place to go see these. The water that you see is, it's just like a jewel sitting there. It tends to be a milky uh, turquoise color. Uh, and very, very beautiful. Um, so this color comes from one, the water being there, which would be a nice blue color, um, but the addition of those sediments gives it that color. Now, what is the study important? Well, the glaciers are melting and the water is changing. So the first question that I wanted to talk about today is what makes water look the way it does? Um, so we can go, and this is all types of water. So oceans, uh, lakes, when we look at it. So we have our body of water and we have our sun um, and we know that light comes from the sun. So when light hits the water, things happen to make the water look a certain color. Uh, the first thing that we see that affects the color of the water is absorption. Um, and what happens is light is split into a spectrum of colors. These colors are defined by their wavelengths and different wavelengths are absorbed by the water at different depths. What we find out is the red wavelengths um, are absorbed first. These are our longer wavelengths and the blues um, are the last to be absorbed. Um, so basically as we start to absorb the red, what we're left behind with is the blue. Okay, so red goes first and the blue is left behind. I'll just write blue is last. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing that happens in the water is scattering. Scattering is just the bouncing of all of the, the wavelengths, the light, off of different things in the water. Um, it tends to bounce off of um, the suspended particles. Um, so bouncing off suspended particles And those particles are things that are um, really small and they're actually held in suspension in the water. 
so that, that they're suspended or in suspension. Um, this can include inorganic particles, so sediments, and it can also include organic particles. So products of uh, organic things, so it can be byproducts of animals, um, it can be dead, you know, dead organic matter. It can actually be living organic matter. So if you have algae in the water, um, all of those things are in the water column and the, the light will bounce off of them and be scattered. And that's gonna change the color of the water. Um, and then the third thing actually just comes down to the particulate comp composition. And this has to do again with these suspended particles. Um, so if you ever have had water, and we'll just talk about some inorganics. Um, if you ever have water that's kind of a reddish color, this can happen if you have lots of iron in the water. Um, if you have greens, this often tells us there's some algae. And then if you have um, kind of those dissolved organics tends to be brown or yellow. I'm just gonna write organics. This kind of give you that, that hummock colored uh, water that you might see. Think of if you want leaves in a puddle starting to break down and they kind of discolor the water and you'll see that in this brown and yellow color. And then some really fine sediments can give it a white color. Oops, and I've got a little crane here in the way. So fine seds would be the last thing. All right, so that's what's happening with the water. We have absorption, scattering, and then the particulate matter comp composition. So what's really happening uh, with all of these glacial lakes? All right, and so when we go and we look at this, um, we'll go back to the lakes again. If we wanna kind of draw the landscape, we'll put our glacier here. Okay, and as it's melting, it's going to create this beautiful lake. Okay, and we know that the water is blue from absorption. So that's the first thing that's happening. Um, and the water is going to be very, very cold. Um, that glacier is kind of grinding up the rocks as it moves and it creates glacial flour which is really fine grain uh, sediments that are being added in. This is gonna give it that white color. So the combination of these two things are going to give it this milky turquoise color. And so then this flower, I'll just kind of write here again, is caused by that scattering, or it's adding to the scattering, and it also has um, just the color itself. Especially in places where you have a lot of limestone, that calcium and carbonate is gonna really skew that color as well. So, if our glacier melts away, what's going to happen? Well, eventually, we're going to get, the water will be there, we'll still get some snow falling in this area, so we'll still get some, you know, additions to the lake, so the lake's not necessarily going to go away, um, but we're going to see a, less and less of this glacial flower being added um, into the lake, and that's going to mean that we're going to remove this component. So, over time, our lakes, that were once turquoise blue are just gonna become more of a blue, a deeper blue color. Um, and then it's also possible that without all of the addition of that rock flower, we're gonna see the lake, the blue change to a different color. And we might see them become actually a bit greener. And the question is why? Well, as we start to remove all those suspended inorganic particles, more light can move through the water column in these lakes. More light opens up the potential for more photosynthesis. If you can have photosynthesis, you've created a better environment for your algae, and you can actually start to see these lakes becoming more productive. Um, so if we have um, I'll write here again, less um, flour or the um, inorganics. We get more light moving through the water column that can allow alg algae to grow and then that can turn into that green color um, in the water. 
Um, so that's what's happening. That was what this report was talking about. Um, I found it was a nice example of um, current uh, geoscience that's going on related to a warming climate with something that we can actually see in the landscape um, and see how that changes. It also helps us kind of rethink why water looks the way it does and where those colors are coming. I hope you found it helpful today.